is another time as the servant of God come up I would like you to ask one thing you want God to do for you what is your heart desire God has just a new thing for us here in the chapel of mercy what is your own new thing you wanted God to do for you today is the last day the Bible says on the last day of the feast Jesus raised us his voice and said if anyone is thirsty let him come we have come what is your own thirst what is your own hunger what is your own heart cry and desperation and passion lift your voice and cry unto the Lord ah unto the Lord Lord here am I do not pass me by this afternoon visit me with your touch run away that burden turn away my captive Father, we want to say thank you. There are things men can do, but there are certain things only God can do. And this is one of such things, a manifestation of your mercy and your grace. And we have come to say thank you. We will never be too familiar with your presence, your power, your glory, your wisdom, your mercy. And Lord, I pray that this afternoon you will speak to our hearts yet again. Give us understanding. Let someone return back with a testimony. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Please give Jesus a big hand clap. Then you may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to start this afternoon by truly, truly congratulating um, the Chapel of Mercy. In fact, the body of believers within um the nis i think it's really remarkable i had the opportunity to know when this was a dream without even i'm not sure that um the first block was already laid and to see what god has done today it is truly a marvel it goes to tell you that when god speaks he's worth believing hallelujah God will always do what he has said. Genesis 21 verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. If God speaks, it is worth believing. It may not make sense, but it pays. Not just to serve Jesus, it pays to believe him. Genesis 21 1. Not 31. 1, 21 verse 1. The Lord visited Sarah as he has said. He did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Hallelujah. And truly like um, Pastor Paul Maman was saying, I think it's a very rare privilege for the service to have, um, maybe not for me, but for the fathers of faith. These are people who God has truly graced and um, in all fairness to them and in honor to the grace upon their lives it would take a lot to have them pass through this place and so it is truly the mercy of God it is truly the mercy of God <laughs> hallelujah amen and um, I just want to charge our hearts in this final session very beautiful work that was done here I remember the last time I was here, we also used this place, but it was still ongoing, work was still ongoing, but I mean, a very beautiful structure that has been put together. And um, let me lend my voice with the leaders of the Chapel of Mercy. 
we truly appreciate everyone whose one naira, whose sweat, whose sacrifice went into this work. The Lord himself, whom you have served, will honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Psalm 122 and verse 1. I just, um, the Lord stirred it in my heart to give a charge. Many times we rejoice over the manifestations of the things that the Lord makes happen in our lives. Could be a structure like this, could be a home, a new family, could be children. It doesn't matter in what expression it comes. Every time you read from scripture, when God delivers his promise unto people, he will always leave a word of caution. Because there is something about the human nature in the presence of promises made manifest. Hallelujah. For instance, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, when you read, he began to tell them, let it not be that when you have built houses, when you have everything, he listed all the wonderful things they could have, he said, let it not be that your heart will be lifted up and you will say to yourself that the power and the might of my hand had given me this. 18 says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Because there is something that happens to men when their problems are solved. There is something that happens to men when their testimonies arrive. Are we together? There is something that happens to men in the presence of results in the presence of abundance there is something that happens to men when all their issues are solved you see that pattern all through in the life of the nation of israel so here's how it usually starts god will bring them abundant blessings his promises made manifest and then the presence of abundance and promises made manifest will usually lead them to a state of complacency and slumber and usually in the presence of abundance they forget about the god who brought all those things and you notice the progression eventually they will be given to the hands of their enemies hallelujah and when they are given to the hands of their enemies they become slaves they become you know subjects to those nations and in the midst of pain usually they will remember or sometimes God can show them mercy by sending a prophet to warn them and say you have deviated from the ways of the Lord. Then they will repent with fastings, you know, sackcloth and ashes like it happened to Nineveh. And usually the moment they repent according to God's mercy, he will send them deliverance. Then they get back to abundance again. Then it moves to complacency. You see the cycle? So it starts with abundance, promises made manifest. Then the temptation is to forget God and they feel they do not need God again. Then in that state, they get back into their hands of their enemies. In the midst of pain and lack, they remember God. Then they cry for mercy. Then God shows up. Then they return back again. Then the cycle continues. So it is a weakness in all men that in the presence of nothing, we easily remember God. In the presence of pain, shame, disappointment, we easily remember God. And we remember, sometimes we make all kinds of vows. Lord, if you do this, I will use it for this. Or if you do this, I will do that in return. Hallelujah. So the Lord put a very simple charge in my heart, in addition to all that we have heard in the course of the week. Um, it is important for us to know the purpose of every blessing that god brings in our lives i think it was dr miles monroe of blessed memory now who said when the purpose of a thing is not known he says abuse is inevitable the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use every time the purpose of a thing is not known abuse becomes inevitable hallelujah praise the name of the lord there are certain drugs for instance and, and and i'm happy i'm speaking to a very intelligent people there are certain kinds of drugs that were initially designed to solve certain health issues am i right on that but a few people found out that there is a way they could manipulate those drugs to give some kind of psychological succor that was not in the original plan 
so you can see someone holding a drug perhaps a drug that was originally made to treat certain things like drugs for cough drugs for whatever and today there are people who consume it beyond the dosage is called abuse you see that now they have stretched beyond the purpose of it and anything God gives men can be abused anything including salvation anything including a good family anything including prosperity anything including health my assignment by the Spirit of the Lord is to help us to understand by the Spirit the purpose for this answered prayer why did God allow this kind of miracle to happen purpose is what gives definition to everything we have no matter what you have in your life if it is not connected to purpose it cannot bless you and it cannot bless God bless the name of the Lord anything at all on its own cannot really bless you and it cannot bring blessings to the name of the Lord it is when the purpose of that thing is known so let's go back to our text Psalm 122 and verse 1 if we have it projected and you can see I'm not sure you'll be able to see maybe too tiny but let me just read it here it says I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord the psalmist is speaking here he says I was glad something made me happy when they told me let's go to the house of the Lord there are many places that we can go to but there is something you only find in the house of the Lord are we together there are things you can find in a library there are things you can find in a museum there are things you can find in the hospital there are things you can find in the market I will not come to church trying to buy tomato and pepper it, will that be correct no they don't sell tomato and pepper in fact Jesus did something about those who were selling and buying in the house of God am I right on that yes if I want to buy tomato pepper and all the ingredients for food there is a designated place it's called a market whether an open market or a store or a mall are we together I will not go to a supermarket and ask them to treat malaria or typhoid is a wrong place are we together now that is not the assignment of the market I will go to the hospital so it's important for us to know when we come to the house of the Lord what was it designed to achieve if it is true that every destination and every platform has a purpose and an assignment and we have agreed that you do not go to look for food in a hospital you do not go to look for treatment in a restaurant it means that every time you are going to any location there is an awareness of what that location was designed to give you are we together so the psalmist here says i was glad when they said unto me there was an awareness that gladdened his heart there was something he was aware of that only can only be found and only be gotten in the house of god and as a final charge if you keep this at the back of your mind then this place will truly remain a house of God and it will remain a habitation of God's presence. But if you forget the purpose for which this was built, it can become a place where men will buy and sell. Jesus entered the temple and he saw the temple. They had changed its use. They were using it for something that it was not originally designed for. He frowned at it and even went to a point of making a whip and began to throw the people away. Hallelujah so let me give you by the spirit the four assignments of the house of god including this building that you see hallelujah anywhere number one anywhere before you start writing just for you to have this it is not a building that makes a place a house of god the first requirement for any place to be called the house of god is that God must be honored in that place and when I talk of God let me say Jesus Christ because today when you mention God it means many things for someone it means an idol for someone it means himself are we together there is no place no matter how beautifully decorated that is qualified to be called the house of God until that man is respected if I come to your office I don't expect you to give me the respect in NIS here yeah, that will be greater than that which you give your leaders it is not my house it's an office if I come to make my passport I have to sit down where you ask me to sit no matter how 
big a man I think I am. Am I right on that? Because it is not my house. But you will know when I'm in my house because I become the epicenter of the honor in my own house. I don't live like a stranger in my house. I would usually not knock a door if it is my house. I will open it because it is my house. So when you call a place the house of God, and then God becomes pushed to the side, and then men become exalted, then it is not the house of God. If it is the house of God, God must become the epicenter of that place. Is someone learning now? So let's, let's walk very quickly. Number one, the first assignment of this place as the house of God is to become a house of prayer for all nations. Mark 11, please, 15 to 17. If this place must remain a house of God, if it must fulfill its assignment, then it must be a house of prayer. And they come to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. We're reading to 17, 16 now. And would not suffer or permit that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And then he said this. Chapel of Mercy, verse 17 now. He taught saying, is it not written my house say my house say god's house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer he said but you have made it that means it is within your power to turn the house of god to do something else if this place must fulfill its prophetic destiny as the house of god here within the nis then it must perpetually become and remain a house of prayer a house of prayer a house of prayer that everybody who comes here whether as a leader or as a member must have this awareness that the reason behind this blessing is that God has found for himself a place dedicated where men and women will come to seek his face where men and women will come to pray the first assignment of this great blessing is that this place must become and must remain eternally a house of prayer. If it is not the house of prayer, it will become a den of robbers. And you know what happens when robbers come? They steal, they kill, and they destroy. And in the case of Satan, he does not just steal things. He steals years, time. He steals peace. He steals joy. A physical thief may not be able to steal years or joy or peace. But Satan can steal anything at all, including your life. So Chapel of Mercy, the first assignment of this glorious gift that God has given you is that you must pay whatever price to make sure that this place becomes and it remains a house of prayer. This must inform the kind of leaders that are selected here. This must inform the kinds of programs that are designed here. This must inf inform the kind of allowance, the kind of consecration that is hallowed within this place. A house of prayer. Jesus had a lot to say about prayer. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Are we together? First Thessalonians 5.17 He says pray without ceasing. Means pray all the time. Be consistent in your prayer. He said what things soever ye desire when ye pray. Believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. Prayer is a pivotal part of the believer's life. A pivotal part of of the believer's life is part of the apostolic model that was left by the early church in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the Bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 and we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word you must obtain grace to pray that this place can be so consecrated that when someone is about to lose his job unfairly they know where to run to 
not the police station that when someone is about to be victimized because he's a christian walking in integrity finally you have found a place that when someone's family is about to be shredded into pieces there is something happening the the plague and the yoke of witchcraft anybody who comes within the nis vicinity and says listen things have not been going well in my life my life looks like i'm about to die there's all kinds of family witchcraft you can tell them there is a place god built for himself a place where god has dedicated to be a house of prayer Bazanji soroba, my say makona, my say makona. Bazanji kunyaba, my say makona, my say makona. I think it was one time when I visited this place, I taught you that prayerlessness is pride. The highest demonstration of pride is to be prayerless. It means you have declared that you do not need the assistance of heaven. It's a declaration of self-sufficiency. Prayerlessness is not just a proof of laxity spiritually. It is pride. The variables that are required for a man to excel in his life are so many. And unassisted, you do not have control of many of those factors. For instance, you cannot control who likes or hates you it takes god to assist men to like or hate you is that true so when you refuse to pray you are declaring that god i do not need you i have invented a way of replacing your value in my life house of mercy if this is to be the house of god and to fulfill its prophetic destiny i repeat one last time ensure insist create principles around this whether you are here or not whether you retire and live or not leave a testimony that whoever mans the helm of leadership in this place they must enter a covenant with jehovah that on no account will this place lose its ministry as a place of prayer number two the second assignment of this place that god has so given you is that if it is to be the house of god and to fulfill its prophetic destiny in this place it must become and remain a place of revelation understanding and transformation please write it down it must become a place of revelation understanding and transformation if the chapel of mercy does not fulfill this assignment it has failed in its prophetic destiny it must become and remain a place of revelation a place of understanding a place of transformation psalm 73 and verse 17 there are places that when you enter you have understanding because the spirit of grace is there it says until i went into the sanctuary of god then understood i there are things you cannot understand until you come into the house of god there are mysteries you cannot understand until you come into the house of god don't say i went to school no the kind of orientation you receive in the house of God is more than physics and chemistry. It's more than intelligence and diplomacy. As important as those things are, there is a superior understanding that is only found when scriptures are opened. Hallelujah. Are we together? First Timothy chapter 3, I believe from verse 14 and 15. The Bible calls the house of god the church of the lord jesus christ and it also calls it the ground and the pillar of truth please give it to us first timothy um chapter 3 i believe first timothy 3 let's try it 14 and 15 did i get that right go to verse 14 okay beautiful it says these things i write unto you hoping to come to thee shortly 
verse 15 i wish we could read it together it says but if i tarry long that thou mayest know how thou ought hast to behave thyself uh -huh, in the house of god which is no 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 just stay at 15 the house of god which is the church of the living god what else it is the pillar and the ground of truth you are permitted to hear lies any other place except the house of god the house of god is not where people should come and be flattered be told a lie be misled be deceived simply because you want human gains this is where people must hear the truth in love the truth about the need to live a holy and a righteous life the truth about the need to love jesus and exalt him above all the truth about the need to love him beyond money beyond titles beyond whatever the truth must be found here that means you must not politicize what happens within this place with all due respect these are some of the things that dampen the truth i rather remain poor and stand true than to have abundance at the expense of truth hallelujah it then means if this place must become a ground and a pillar of truth with all due respect you must hallow your altar and know the kind of voices that stand here popular does not mean spiritual no articulate does not mean spiritual we need to manage our altars and see to it that the sanctity of the altar is preserved at all costs i love and respect politicians but many of them tell lies you have to be careful so they don't come and stand up and pollute your altar with all kinds of nonsense because of money that will come in i say this with all due respect it's important they understand that the house of god is not a cinema center that the house of god is not some movie place no if you want to lie you can go outside if you want to repent you are welcome to the house of god say amen, amen. hallelujah the pillar and the ground of truth you must love the lord and love his truth beyond any material blessing any man can offer satan came to jesus and he said turn these stones to bread jesus said no 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 fall from a holy place the angels will keep you he said no 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 bow to me and i will give you all of this the church should never be a place of compromise don't replace the altar because of a search and a pursuit for mundane things i am a preacher that believes in teaching the whole counsel of god prosperity healing righteousness everything but there all truth do not hold equal value there are truths in according to scripture that are emphasized more than others i will not teach prosperity to match the same passion as salvation no they do not hold the same value are we together in order of priority i would rather you meet a dying man what that man needs is a message of the gospel and to be saved how be it the gospel about prosperity healing and the rest they are important but their value from an eternal standpoint is not the same so if this place is to become a place of transformation and understanding truth must be arranged line upon line so that there is no exaggeration and there is no de-emphasizing the whole counsel of god must be presented that is the wisdom that is used in cooking in a kitchen is that true women when you go to cook you don't put the same quantity of rice as the same quantity of salt but salt is needed if you put one mudu of rice and one mudu of salt you did not cook well or one mudu of rice and one mudu of pepper you will kill everybody who wants to eat that food this is how it is spiritually i hope you know that the ministry of the word is likened to a chef serving food jeremiah 3 15 and i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart give it to us please and they shall feed you so preaching is feeding teaching is feeding the ministry of the word is feeding and how many of you know from biology that you are a product of what you eat the quality of what you eat is who you become are we learning now so the house of god if the chapel of mercy is to actualize his prophetic destiny with all due respect all the leaders that are mandated week in week out to come and serve people the word of god they must take the ministry of the word seriously study it says to show yourself approved 
unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth you can wrongly divide the word you can emotionally divide the word you can sentimentally divide the word you can politically divide the word but there is a way to divide the word such that you communicate truth as intended by God let me charge the leaders therefore who serve God's people here with the word let's obtain grace from God to stay and study to know God not just to have sermons because what you bring in the pulpit is an overflow of who you are with God hallelujah are we getting blessed already number three what is the third assignment of the chapel of mercy I like the fact that it is called the chapel of mercy if this place is to fulfill its prophetic destiny it must be and remain a place where men can access help and strength from God it must be and it must remain a place where men can access help and strength from God the church of the Lord Jesus Christ must be a place where weak and wounded people must be able to access help and strength haven't challenged us to teach properly the church sometimes becomes so judgmental, becomes so, so carry a holier than thou mentality and never give people room. People will make mistakes. People will backslide. People will find themselves in their state of sin and they will be needing help. Make sure that on one side while you are protecting truth, on another side you are holding a balm in your hand to help wounded people. If both of your hands are just holding the sword, you will kill people. And if both of your hands are holding a bandage, you will lead to complacency. One hand must stand protecting truth, but the other hand must be compassionate enough to help wounded people. The house of God must be and remain a place where people come to find help and strength. Psalm 20 from verse 1 to 3. And as I say this, if it applies to you, I want you to shout a big amen. No, I've not said it yet. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Here is it. Send you help. From where? Not from heaven. Send you help from his sanctuary. The house of the Lord is a place where men should be able to find help. That someone comes and says I'm looking for help my life is shattered I have served the devil all the days of my life I went somewhere and people condemned and threw me is there a place within the NIS where someone can help me and bring me to Jesus and and help my bleeding wound and help my bleeding family hallelujah we must be able to rebuke and correct in love but we must be able to show men mercy sometimes the body of christ we have all kinds of swords and our swords are supposed to be used it's called the sword of the spirit we are supposed to fight the devil with it but sometimes we use it and kill the warriors in the making you can use that sword of the spirit to fight or you can use the sword of the spirit to kill and you know that the sword of the spirit is the word of god you can literally use scripture to discourage someone that at the end the person came to church looking for God. The person has admitted that I cannot help myself. But the way and the manner you communicated at the end the person says there's no hope for me. I'm leaving. No, it ought not to be so. Every time Jesus who was the epitome of holiness and righteousness and truth when he met the woman at the well he showed her love and based on his conversation can you imagine the same man who was preaching on a crusade ground he did not consider it a waste of time to stay with one weak woman I hope you know the entire John chapter 3 was a discussion between Jesus and one man there are many people who will be coming here and let me tell you there are three groups of people who will come here be sensitive to know them when they come number one when you see the madman in Gadara be patient that is an evangelist on his way don't condemn him because there is a legion of devils in him 
your assignment is to cast the demons out rehabilitate him and that once madman in Gadara will go and bring ten cities to Jesus number two there is a woman who was once she had seven demons that Jesus delivered from she lived a riotous life but when she came the Bible says Jesus delivered seven demons out of her and she was part of those who later served in the ministry number three there is the woman at the well this woman had five husbands the sixth was not even her husband and Jesus comes to her as the seventh bringing an end to that kind of life and single-handedly she left everything she had and said come see a man who has shown me everything I have done I hope when these three groups of people come here there will be room for them you see you are not used as you are you come as you are then you are changed you don't come as you are to stay as you are that is now the balance anybody who comes as he is and wants to stay as he is you can as well go out because your coming is proof that you are ready to change are we learning a place of help and a place of mercy send the help from a sanctuary all kinds of help emotional help perhaps even financial help that someone comes and says sincerely i'm not a careless person my family my entire children have not eaten i'm going through a marital crisis and you don't have to wait for the leaders someone will remember apostle joshua selman's message and said while this place was being dedicated i remember this message i may not be able to do everything but here is 500 naira can you please go and buy gary for your children help has come from the sanctuary and that person will say everybody ran away from me but now you have come to accept me the way i am let me give you the last and final is god helping us already so number one that the first assignment of this glorious place is that it must become and remain a house of prayer number two it must become a place of revelation a place of understanding and a place of transformation i wish i had time to talk a bit about transformation it means nobody should come here and remain the way they are no one month two months six months there should be a new version of you and then number three should be a place of help and strength there are weak and wounded people i tell you our world is full of people who just smile and wear nice clothes but if you sit down to counsel them it's their tears that will do the speaking there are many people who are living with sicknesses right now they come to church every day hoping that one day god will visit them there are people the moment they come to church returning back home their husbands are waiting for them it's going to be war but they have vowed that they will keep fighting it while they love jesus the church should be a place where we should experience the ministry of the great physician remember the story of the good samaritan a man of god came and saw him and passed and said i'm running to church and the man remained there another religious person came and ran but a samaritan saw this man and said my god no and he bombed him took him to an inn and said please care for this man when i return if there is anything please leave it at I, I, will, I will pay for the bill and jesus used that story to teach us a lesson is someone learning number four hmm. as i just said this number three i just believed in my heart i just sensed in my heart that I'm just describing someone in this place and it's like you are saying apostle it's as if you are just talking about me it is only God that knows the kind of pain I'm having in my heart from the pain of betrayal pain of disappointment pain of you know people saying you have been serving God for years where is your result do you know that it is painful to wait for the promises of God to be made manifest because at that time you can't tell people you don't love God but the evidence may not yet be there ask Hannah Anna was a woman who went to Shiloh every time and Penina mocked and said whenever it's time for offering you are coming time for service coming where is your child I'm sure that Anna would go back and say God why are you doing this to me the most difficult journey in the believers life is the journey between prophecy and its manifestation oh come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary, God is here. 
Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary God is here. so when you come to church sometimes while praise and worship is happening and you are dancing don't think everyone who is just quiet is not participating there are people who barely just got there they are saying thank God I finally arrived I hope that when the preacher comes, I will hear something that will help me. Have you seen people who come to church and even before service starts, they sit quietly and they are just crying. And sometimes you think they are crying because of the beauty of the place. Until you know the problems that are in their life. While they are in that church, the landlord says, just to inform you, I'm waiting for you. I, I, they told me you are in church. I will wait. Finish and come and meet me. I hope you come to me with your God and my rent. Come lay down the burdens you have carried for in this sanctuary God is Can I give you the final one? There are many more but let me give you four. The fourth assignment of this beautiful place that God has so built for himself is that it must become a place and remain a place where we experience the power and the glory of God. If the chapel of mercy as the house of God is to fulfill its assignment here within the NIS, it must become and remain a place where people experience the power and the glory of God. Say power say glory one more time say power say glory psalm 63 1 and 2 psalm 63 1 and 2 psalm 63 1 and 2 oh god you are my god and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. I will work, work in your way. For step by step you lead me And I will follow you all of my days Oh God, it says, you are my God Psalm 63, 1 Early will I seek you My soul thirsts for you My flesh longs for you In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water Why? Verse 2 Let's read together. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary. Why did I look for you in the sanctuary? To see your power and to see your glory. When I want to see the power of God and I want to see the glory of God, I run to his sanctuary. What kind of power? The power to heal. The power to end age-long causes. Your employment letter cannot eradicate a cause from your life. It can only give you a job. But if that cause is still there, you will collect your salary and still be going down. But not when you come to the sanctuary. The sanctuary gives beyond an employment letter. That means there are people when God wants to deliver, He can give them an employment to come and become... Um, become employees of the NIS but it's not about NIS it's so that they can finally arrive here because what is sitting on their destiny will require power more than employment you believe this I have sought for you in the sanctuary because it is your house let me find there not just prayer as important as that is not just the teaching not just compassion but it must become a place of power a place of power power against unclean spirits 
powers that sit on the destinies of people and vow that nobody will rise powers that are determined to destroy marriages to turn children who were born in godly families to become armed robbers and prostitutes and useless people one encounter here at chapel of mercy should bring an end to the captivity of people hallelujah do you believe that that means the entire activities within a service from the opening prayer to the praise and worship if the worship team understands this that means they don't just rehearse songs but their songs come from the secret place that every time you stand to sing you are trusting God to move through your songs and break chains and break captivities that just five minutes of singing a song you stop singing special numbers and you bring songs that that minister to the spirits of people from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun your name is to from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun your name is to you imagine that someone who has been trusting God for 10 years for the fruit of the womb and then she just gets an employment to come here and immediately she arrives the chapel of mercy it doesn't matter what program is holding just because jehovah is here fire from heaven rests upon that woman's life and she will tell you the next service she will come with her husband very soon you will have to start screening people because there will be such a crowd of people outside this i i don't care that is a chapel for the nis all we know is that god is here healing is here deliverance is here hallelujah can i tell you this have you noticed that when you are putting your programs together there are people who are not part of the nis but they don't care the moment people know god is in a place they, they even if it means for them to join a queue they will join a queue and wait you don't know how far people can endure provided there is a guarantee they will encounter god ask a herbalist what will make a matured person who will quarrel you for not calling him sir and yet because he's going to see a herbalist to get power they will say turn back and he will turn back move backward and he will move backward that is what people can do when they are sure they will find power i'm praying for this place in the name of jesus christ may this place not only be a house of mercy but a house of power a house of deliverance the bible says upon mount zion is it in your bible there shall be deliverance and holiness deliverance is not just being separated from spirits alone deliverance is also being separated from conditions condition failure is a condition powered by spirits what is a condition poverty is a condition weakness is a condition so when we talk about deliverance we are not just talking of driving the spirit influences alone by the power of the world that is able to divide asunder and pierce to cutting the 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 soul the, the thoughts and the intents of the heart you can literally separate a man from his condition that after service the trouble that was connected to him remains while the man walks free hallelujah chapel of mercy if this place must remain the house of god this must be your covenant and it is not for the leaders it is for everyone who names the name of christ it is for every believer here whatever it would take to make this place become and remain a house of prayer is everybody's business whatever it would take to make this house become and remain a place of revelation where the truth of god's word is communicated is everybody's business whatever must make this place become and remain a place where people find help and find strength it is everybody's business 
and whatever will make this place become a place of power that means God will be raising someone to be interceding for those who teach here. Lord, they will not fail. Let strength come. Nothing will happen around their homes that will affect them. That becomes your business. This is how to serve in the house of God. It's not just come to sit down and watch the man of God. No. For some of you who God has blessed financially, God may put it in your heart and say, make sure consistently. Your seeds are coming both to the ministry and to the leaders to encourage them to make sure that they have the stamina to resist any kind of temptation. That because when they fall to these temptations, it will affect the purity of their delivery and eventually it will affect the assignment and the prophetic destiny of this place. We are going to pray. Are you ready to pray? Hallelujah. 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 We'll just take a few minutes to pray. The first prayer will be a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, now we understand what you have done. It's beyond a building. You have erected an altar in the NIS where your presence will perpetually dwell. When they were dedicating the temple of Solomon, Solomon said, now arise, O God. He says, come to your resting place. You and the ark of your might. I want you to pray and say, Father, thank you for giving this gift to the NIS. Go ahead and thank him. Someone is telling Jesus, thank you. someone is telling the Lord thank you maybe it's your child that will be saved in this very chapel maybe it's your spouse that will be saved in this chapel maybe the leaders of the NIS not even just a Christian community may be the ones who will be saved here go ahead and thank the King of Kings In the name of Jesus prayer point number two father every role I have to play to make this place remain your prophetic habitation I obtain grace go ahead and pray every role I have to pray you're not just coming here as a receiver as a congregant as a member as part of the fellowship there is a kingdom responsibility upon you someone is praying every role I have to pray Every role I have to play, every role I have to play, I obtain grace to play. Hallelujah. Final prayer before I speak over your life. We are going to pray now and list these four things that I spoke about. That Father, the grace for prayer let it remain upon this house the grace that makes for quality revelation of the word let it remain here the grace that can help men to show men help and that they find strength let it be found here and finally the power of the Holy Spirit may it remain here is it not the psalmist I mean the Paul who said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ he said the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit are you ready to pray go ahead please lift your voice in one minute father let this place become and remain the house of prayer the house of prayer angelic activities bringing answers to prayer let this place remain a place of revelation understanding transformation by the Spirit of God let this place remain a place where people can find help can find mercy can find strength when they are weary and finally oh God let the power of the Holy Ghost 
be resident in this place power to heal power to change power to deliver power to create breakthroughs to rewrite the stories of the destinies of men hallelujah 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 I want to speak over your life now let me share with you one secret that God showed me in my life one of the secrets to give anything longevity in your life is to hand it over to God you want to find out the secret behind the longevity of anything hand it over to God yes it says but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that not that which you have that which is committed to him he only keeps what is committed to him Yeshua Hamashia One more time Father, I join my faith with the fathers of faith who have stood upon this altar to declare over your people and to declare over this beautiful structure and in the name of Jesus even by the privilege of the election of grace I decree and I declare over the chapel of mercy over the community of believers within the NIS in the name of Jesus remain a people of prayer in the name of Jesus remain a people of revelation in the name of Jesus remain a people of strength remain a people who God has helped and finally remain a people of power now I pray for the chapel of mercy in the name of Jesus I lend my voice alongside that of the fathers who have spoken over this place we call this place an altar of God's presence we call this place an altar of prayer we call this place an altar of revelation we call this place an altar of mercy and help and strength we call this place an altar of power Satan we decree and declare that you take your hands off this place this building will not collapse nobody will die in this place in the name of Jesus every prayer that is offered in this place may my God answer speedily everyone who cries before the Lord in this place let speedy answers come let captivities be lifted from this place let burdens and reproaches be rolled away in the name of Jesus Christ let the barren come here and find children let the poor come here and be lifted by God in the name of Jesus hear me no one who has attended this place today will experience untimely death no leader in this place will die before their time and I pray it will never be that anybody will stand as a leader here who does not fear God it will never be that anyone will stand as a leader here who does not serve God nobody with a familiar spirit or strange power will stand upon your altar here 
in the name of Jesus Christ everything you agree upon as touching the in lack and want in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ give Jesus a big hand clap let the leaders of NICF both here in the headquarters and other formations come to the front and departmental leaders if you are a leader in your department also come as our father pray for us hallelujah go ahead just pray in one minute everyone we are praying one to speak over the great leaders hallelujah is someone praying Father, help them, strengthen them, empower them by your spirit. It takes a lot to serve in any capacity of leadership, more so spiritual leadership. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Listen, one of the ways that Satan discourages people is to inflict pain and loss and shame on the leaders so that those who follow them become discouraged. Are we together? The Bible says, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Yes. Chances are excellent that when you see your leaders failing, things going down, you'll say, no, I can't come and waste my time here. Leaders inspire through the results that are produced from their own lives. Am I right on that? Stretch your hands, everybody, in one minute to those in front. The same way you would have prayed for yourself, please pray for them. The same way you would have prayed for your spouse, your child, your father, your mother, your uncle, the man of God you love and honor. Please pray for them. Say, Lord, keep them. As they travel, keep them. As they exercise their duties across the various stations where they are represented, keep them. The keeping grace, the staying power, the grace to pray, the grace to fast, the grace to love Jesus. Character, the grace for unity that God will set them free from offense God will set them free from bitterness God will set them free from anger these are the things that destroy mighty men sometimes it may not be the weightier sins but anger, offense, unforgiveness these are the things that become a cancer to leaders in the name of Jesus by the privilege of God's mercies I speak over you the grace that causes leaders to you don't have to kneel please stand the grace that causes leaders to excel i release it upon you and in the various capacities wherein you are represented i pray that it will not just be someone sitting in an office without grace the grace to deliver and discharge to expectation i release it upon you while you are serving your family members will not go down while you are serving your spiritual life will not go down while you are serving your health will not go down i cause every power that wants you to be a victim of your message i cause every power that wants you to be a victim of the office wherein you represent in the name of jesus grace to excel you will not die in the air you will not die on the road you will not die by sea you will not be a victim of kidnappers in the name of jesus the eye of wicked men will not see you the desires of the wicked will not come to you may the lord distinguish you therefore in the name of the father son and the holy spirit i call you blessed you are blessed in the city you are blessed in the country in jesus name we pray amen god bless you now let me speak over everyone finally oh by the way if you are in this place right now i'm wrapping up already and 
you have never truly made Jesus Lord of your life never truly made Jesus Lord of your life perhaps you came here for the first time you were invited you just came to grace the occasion of having fathers come around or you are here and you are saying apostle I remember making this altar call this prayer but as it is I cannot sincerely say that things are right with my work with the Lord I don't want you to be ashamed I'm looking for just one sincere person who is saying I do not want to waste this day wherever you are I want you to walk around don't be ashamed of anybody we're a family of faith boldly leave your seat if you convince me that truly there is nobody then I will continue but it's impossible to have a gathering of people like this and there is not one person who wants to make it right let's celebrate them as they come I will count one to five very quickly leave your seat and come and stand here one don't wait for someone to come make up your mind that you are coming to Jesus two no one will force you it is between you and the Lord Jesus Christ but remember the Bible says in the day that you hear his voice do not harden your heart three I count five and I begin to pray for you four and the fifth count five thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for making this noble decision let me request that you just raise your right hand thank you for this bold decision say after me Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and I believe that you are the Son of God right now I accept Jesus into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I am a child of God I live for Jesus all the days of my life amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for this blessed people thank you for your hand upon their lives and I pray in Jesus name that this decision remains true and permanent in your life you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in the name of Jesus amen and amen now perhaps after, okay there's there's um, there's a woman who is waving her hands four of you may I request that you just turn to my back and she will just have a word with you and then you'll be back hallelujah one more time nis the christian community and chapel of mercy a big congratulations to you for this remarkable project the lord thank bless you and thank you for this opportunity please